everyone welcome to our channel knowledge of friends subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon for the latest update today we're going to start with your chemistry for the class 12 and that is very important here and this is uh, to, in today's class we'll start discussing about unit 8 where we had completed your unit 1 and a uh, unit 2 unit 3 unit 4 unit 5 unit 6 and unit 7 as well lastly we had completed that and we had started with unit 8 which is a d and f block element in the next coming class hopefully if we will end up with either this unit so uh, in this part of ncrt of class 12 which is important for the academic as well competition as well that is important so on the same cases we have to cover up that soon as well and on the same behalf of it of first we have to complete that and it's before starting with this it's a huge request from my side to all the viewers to please go through the subscribe button and please like share and subscribe to our channel so that many and maximum people can get the information at once and even though you can also enjoy the video as well let's go ahead with that and before starting with this the d and f block element we will discuss about the transitions element as well as the inner transition element as well which is of d block uh, d block is known as transition element the f block is known as the inner transition element as, uh, as well and on the same cases we will discuss about in uh, the inner transition element we'll discuss about the lanthanides and actinides and uh, in, on the same case uh, the dnf block where iron copper silver and a gold are among the transition elements that have a played important role in the development of human civilization and the inner transition elements such as thpa and u that are proving excite excellent sources of nuclear energy in a modern world times as well we'll discuss about more into detail that the d block of the periodic table that contains the element of the groups uh, from uh, group 3 to group 12 here that they are including in which the do vitals are progressively filled in each of the four log period with the element consisting of the f block are those in uh, that uh, in uh, which that the 4f and the 5f orbitals are progressively filled in the latter and uh, two long periods so these elements are formed uh, that are the formal members of group 3 from which they have been taken out to form a separate f block of the periodic table where the mean the names are transition metals and inner transition metals that are often used to refer the element of the d block element d and f block uh, uh, you know respectively so they are mainly uh, 3 uh, 3d series of the transition metal which is 3d series we are from sc to zinc and then 4d series which is y to cd and then 5d series which is lanth uh, lanthanides to hg that omitting the ce to uh, lu as well that the fourth 6d series which is begins to uh, which is uh, begin this ac is still incomplete and um, the two series of the inner transition metals which is 4f and 5f that are known as lanthanides and actinides respectively will that the transition element that gives uh, you know the color iron but zinc and cadmium and of course uh, that is the mercury not in the color so uh, tiny are uh, you know uh, that uh, they are not a transition element as well on the same case strictly speaking a transition element is defined as the one which has been completely filled a do vital in its ground state or in any one of the oxidation state zinc cadmium and mercury of group 12 and a full d power 10 that the block shell that they have completed the 10 configuration in their ground state as well as in their common oxidation state and hence are not regarded as transition metal however being the end members of the three transition series their chemistry is studied along with the chemistry of the transition metals and the pressures of partially filled d or f orbital in their atom that says the study of the transition element as well on the same cases when we go ahead with the further one and that will discussed here on their compounds that is apart from that of the main group and that elements however the usual theory of the valence or that uh, that uh, applicable to the main group element that can also be applied successfully to the transition element as well in the same cases uh, we go ahead which is uh, that is you know uh, that the various precious metals such as silver gold and platinum and industrially important metals like iron copper and titanium form part of the transition metals and in this unit besides interaction we shall give a deal with a electronic configuration that occurrence in the general characteristics of the transition element with a special emphasis on the trends in the properties of uh, the first 
pro which is 3d transition metal and the preparation and the properties of some important compounds this will be followed by the considerations of certain a general aspect such as electronic configuration oxidation state and chemical reactivity of the inner transition metals as well with the same case we'll discuss about the transition element which is your d block So the transition elements which is D block. Okay, so in this first we'll discuss about positions in the periodic table. So first we'll discuss that and then further we'll go ahead and more over we'll continue with that. So first of all we'll discuss about position in the periodic table in the same cases where the d block occupies the large middle section that flanked by s and p block in the periodic table the very name uh, that transition given to the elements of d block is only because of their positions between s and p block element where the d orbital of the uh, penultimate energy that level as their atoms receive electrons giving rise to the three rows of the transition metals that is 3d 4d and 5d the fourth row of 6d is still incomplete and uh, these series of transition elements are that will be representing and that i will be showing you through a you know a table here that will form it on the same cases the another will talk about the another about the transition element of d block which is your electronic configuration of the d block elements in the same cases in general that the electronic configuration of these element is your uh, which is uh, you know that is then n minus 1 d power from 1 to 10 ns 1 to 10 to here that we have So in the same cases that we have talked about it and that we have here. So where the n minus one stands for the you know d orbital, which may have one to ten electron, and the outermost n s orbital that may have one or two electrons as well. However, this generalization has several exceptions because of very little energy differences between n minus one d and ns orbitals furthermore half and completely filled sets of orbitals are relatively you know, more stable where consequences of these factors is reflected that is you know uh, reflected here but the same cases and uh, that relatively more stable and the consequences of factor is reflected in the electron con electron configurations of cr and copper in the third uh, 3d series as well where we have to consider of you know that is of CR for example which has 3D5 and 4S1 instead of 3D4, 4S2. The energy gap between the two set which is 3D and 4S of orbitals is small enough to prevent electron entering the 3D orbitals and similarly in case of copper the configuration is 3D10, 4S1 and not uh, you know 3D9 and 4S2. So the outer electronic configuration of the transition element that we have been discussing here in detail. So the outer electronic configuration of the transition element which is of ground state. We will discuss the first series first. So for that we have a first series is sr sorry sc then dr v cr mn fe co ni 
see you z n so this is we have on the same cases here that we have z just over some 3d data first we'll talk about that of number and then after that we will be uh, representing the uh, no numbers here that has been filling here the filling that we can see that okay so yes made a sort of a table first This is I. Okay. So for the scene, we will go ahead for the filling first. For the, but just I will just write atomic number for all, so it will be clear from twenty one to thirty. We have twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, and thirty. So here four s orbital that filling has been taken to one for the three d is one two two four is two and three d one uh three d two two and three one five two five two six two seven two eight one ten and two ten okay this is how the filling has been taken place now we'll make uh, another table for the scene and that we have to talk about it and which is also you know the important here let's go ahead for the second series this is for the first series here so just make it out of uh, oval and so that we'll get to know about it okay this is for the second series we have in the, uh, the D uh, block element which is the transition element so here we have y z r n b m o t e sorry t c then r u r h P D A G and C D E and the four we have is your five fifth here that has been filling in four D. So that we have So we'll do the filling here first. That is, it will be. I will just write it down the atomic number first: 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, and 48. Filling we have for 5 s that is 2, 40, that is 1, 2, 2, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7. 1 8 1 8 then 0 10 1 10 and 2 10 that has been the filling has been taken place now we will go ahead and to talk about the third series here so here we have as follows that what we have to talk about it So for the same we have this is the lanthanide series LA HF T A W R E O S I R 
Pty Au and Hg. We have Z six plus and five D fillings. Here that we have to talk about it. So the same case first will represent it is from 57 to 80. We represented that. So it will be 57. Then we have 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, and then 80. This is the success of vital and 5D filling that we have taken place is 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6, 2, 7, 1, 9, 1, 10, and 2, 10. That we have as follows. Now we'll go ahead further. We'll talk about it and that is the another one. Is your the fourth series for the fourth series we have is uh, from you know that is uh, that we have here is from axioms AC then we have RF DB ST BH HS MT D S R G then we have U B okay so here we have Z seven S and sixty okay that is the filling we have will be having like this okay so we uh, complete that series as well and that being representing here which is form of a89 to uh, 112 that is your 104 105 106 107 108 109 110 111 and 112 this is the thing which we have in uh, the another blog that we have to talk about it and we'll take discuss here in the detail about here that as well the atom for 7s and 60 the filling we have 2 1 2 2 2 3 2 4 2 5 2 6 2 7 2 8 1 10 and 2 here on the same cases for the same the, the electronic configuration of the zn and cd which is an uh, hg that are represented the general formula which is n minus 1 d10 ns2 so the orbitals in these elements are completely filled in the ground state as well as in their common oxidation state as well and therefore they are not regarded as transition elements where the d orbital of the transition element project to the periphery of uh, an atom more than the other orbitals that is s and p and hence they are more influenced by the surrounding as well as affecting the atoms or molecules surrounding them in some respect the ions of a given or uh, given of uh, the d configuration where n equals to one to nine and having uh, have a similar magnetic and electronic properties with partially filled d orbital these elements exhibits the certain characteristics properties such as displays of the varieties of oxygen here which is oxidation state formations of colored ions and entering into the complex uh, you know in form formations with a variety of lens as well 
We are in the same case the transition methods and their compound also exhibits the catalytic property and paramagnetic behavior. All these characteristics have been discussed in detail later in the unit here. On the same cases here that there are the greater horizontal similarities in the properties of the transition element that in contrast to the main group element and however some group similarities also exist. We shall first study the general characteristics and their trends in the horizontal rows and particularly the 3D row and then consider some group uh, simultaneous similarities as well. Now we will be going ahead to discuss about another the question we talk about it and which is we have the question of the session as from this unit this is the first question here but yes of course it is important so we'll deal that. So the question is on what ground can you say that uh, scandium z equals to 21 is a transition element but zinc z equals to 30 is not which we have to talk about it. So here as you can see here for the first series that is the scandium 21 it is a transition element but it is not so that what we have to represent it here so I will just write it on the question first on what ground can you say that scandium z equals to 21 is a transition element but zinc z equals to 30 is not like we have to talk about it so on the basis of incompletely filled 3d orbital in case of scandium atom in its ground state which is 3d1 and it is regarded as a transition element on the other hand zinc atom has a completely filled d orbital which is 3d10 in its ground state as well as in its oxidized state so hence it is not regarded as a transition element this is the reason here that you have to answer it out while they had asked you about these type of questions here now the another question i will give you as a homework where that silver atom have a, has completely filled d orbitals which is 4d10 4d10 in its ground state so how can you say that it is a transition element okay so now we discussed about the general properties of the transition element and that is of d block so we will, they will discuss about many characteristics as well some many properties we can say that, that we have to discuss here. so let's go ahead detailed general properties of the transition elements which is d-block so the first property we talk about it which is important as well so the first property is physical properties in terms of uh, physical property here we were nearly all the transition elements display the typical metallic properties such as high tensile strength, ductility, uh, malleability, high thermal, uh, you know, temp that we have, and uh, electrical conductivity and metallic textures. So with the exceptions of uh, that is uh, we have that the exceptions of zinc, CD, and HG and Fn. They have one or more typical metallic structures normal temperature so we'll discuss about the lattice uh, structures of transition metals that is in, even the important here so let's go ahead for the scene lattice the structures of transition metals here we have so for the same we'll go ahead this is we'll just make it out the table here form following so that you will get to know So for the same we have 
So the another one is so y is the da N B M O T E so T C R U R H P D A G and that is your C D we have okay for the another one here So now we'll go ahead here in the details about it and then we'll discuss the another series which is we have uh, for the rest next week we'll talk about it for the length and height edge as well so for the same so first we'll complete this and then we'll surely complete that as well so this is hcp pcc as well scp bcc 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 and bcc as well ccp as well which is scp tcp bcc and hcp ccp ccp and ccp and that is your hcp for the next we have here for the same is hcp bcc HCP, BCC, 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 HCP, HCC, CCP, 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 and then of course that is XCP here that we have for the another word for the lanthanide series we have to talk about it and that is also an important one. Let's go ahead for the same. So the same cases will go ahead for the another one that we have to talk about it and for the another series we have that is for length 9 it is NHS TA WRE OS IR PT AU HG So we have here for the same the SCP CP we have to talk about it. So here for the same we'll talk about it. This is for SCP. This is C C P B C C H C P B C C B C C B C C H C P H C P C C P C C P and C C P as well and then we have your X here. So this is all that what had been represent here. So B C C which is representing here is your body centered cubic. H C P is your hexagonal closed packed and C C P is your cubic closed packed and X is a typical metal structure here. Okay. In the same cases, the transition metal with the same except of zinc and C D and H G that are very you know much hard here. And uh, that have low uh, volatility and they are melting and boiling points are high 
that uh, the melting of the 3D and 4D and 5D transitions metals that the high melting points of these metals are attributed to the involvement of greater number of electrons from N-1D in addition uh, to the electron uh, to the NS electron in the uh, interatomic metallic bonding and in, in any row the melting point of these metals rises into maximize, maximize at d5 except for anomalous values of mn and tc and that uh, fall uh, regularly as the atomic number that increases and they have a high enthalpies of atomization which that uh, the maximum of uh, the about that the middle of each series indicate that one unpaired electron per d orbital in a particularly favorable for the strong interatomic interactions in general the greater the number of the valence electron the stronger the results in bonding here and uh, since the enthalpy of the atomization is an important factor in determining the uh, that the standard electrode potential of a metal and metals with very high enthalpy of atomization that is very high boiling point that uh, tend to be a noble in their reactions as well on the same cases we uh, that uh, we'll discuss uh, you know electrode potentials here so we will represent a graph for that and that is also an important one for the same the trends and melting points of transition element will draw it first this is trends in i just write it down here first i did name it out one this is your atomic number in this side okay on this is side we have your melting point so 10 to the power 3 kelvin so in the same cases this is 1 2 3 and 4 okay so this is your trends in melting point of transition element okay so so in the same cases we draw it with a different different pens so that it will be visible to you This is for Cu. This is uh, uh, Ni, Pd, Co, Fe, Mn, Cr, V, and this is Ti. So this is all that what we had labeled it out. So for the same, we'll go ahead for the another one, another graph is to be as with the yellow pen. I will just denote it by that for the Zr series. That are will go NB, then MO, then TE, then RU, then RB, then sorry RH, then it is PT, and again then we have your this is been counting. We'll be colliding here. This is been A. Now we'll go ahead for the another one and that is the HF line that we have to cross it out and I will draw that by a blue pen only. So it will be visible clearly HR okay above 2 it is HR then above 3 is your TA then W then we have RE then we have OS then IR then again we have PT then again we have your that is colliding it is AG so this is all that what we have trends and melting points of transition element now we'll discuss about uh, the trends and enthalpies of atomization of the transition element that we have to discuss here with a different pen yes of course we'll do that and first we'll draw it here only so in the same cases here um, this has been named as 0, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, and 800, 900. Okay. So here for the same series 1, I will draw by blue pen only. So this is now near about 300. 
okay i'm sorry black pen only and then of course for this is for the series one for the series two we'll just go ahead for the blue pen only that is stars from 400 Okay, then again we have here the third one, which is the third series. We can talk about it, which is I will just draw by black purple here, which is starting from 600. So, here that we have, and in respect towards it, we're from going ahead here in the detail. So, yes, uh, this is your delta H per kg mole in volt and this is for atomic number this is for series 1 series 2 series 3 and the representation is trends in enthalpies atomization of transition element here it has been representing and even though which we have to consider about it and even though yes we have to go ahead for the same as well so that is also important one in the same reference towards it if i'm going ahead so on, on the behalf of it we are the another generalization that may be drawn uh, here is that the metals of the second and the third series have a greater enthalpies of atomization than the corresponding element of the first series and this is an important factor in accounting for the occurrence of much more in uh, you know frequent metal the metal bonding in the compound of the heavy transition metal it is and in the same case we can say that heat required to break uh, the metal lattice uh, to uh, get free that is yeah being equals to you know that is of an atom of hydrogen we will just say that and the diobital having a less you know that the shielding effect here that we'll discuss here in the next property so the second property uh, the second uh, we talk about here in the same so that is your the variations in atomic and ionic sizes of transition element so this is variation in atomic and ionic sizes of transition element metals okay that we have to talk about it so in this in a general ions of the same charge has been in a given series that shows a progressive decrease in radius with increasing uh, the atomic number and this is because of the new electron and that enters a d orbital each time when increased charge increases by unity it may be recalled that the shielding effect of the d orbital is not that effective and has the net electrostatic attractions between the nuclear charge and the outermost electron that increases the ionic radius decreases where the same trend is observed in the atomic radii of the given series and however the variations within a series is a quite small and interesting point emerges when atomic sizes of one series are composed with those of the corresponding element in the other series and the curves uh, that shows an increase uh, from the first that is to 3d to the second 4d series of the element but the radii of the third which is 5d series are virtually and the same those of the corresponding members of the second series here this phenomena is associated with the interventions of uh, the 4f orbitals and which must be filled before the 5d series of the element begin the filling of uh, 4f before a 5d orbital that results in the regular decrease in atomic radii that called lanthanoids contraction which essentially a compensate uh, for the expected here and uh, for the theme that was uh, expected uh, in, uh, you know, in a just uh, while we are dealing with in a, an increase in our atomic size so with increasing the atomic number and on the same cases when we are going ahead that uh, the you know that the net of uh, the lanthanoids we talk about it so where uh, the length uh, result uh, of the lanthanoids that uh, contractions is two uh, is that the second and the third d series that exhibits the similar radii example is the dark which is 160 pm and hf that is 159 pm and have very similar physical and chemical properties much more than that expected on the basis of the usual family relationship here so we all H that R and HF have a some size, same size, and why it has that's why it has you know same physical and chemical properties as well. And then uh, metallic uh, the radius and atomic mass uh, decreases in metallic radius and uh, in density that is increases here. 
So the factor that is responsible for the lanthanoids contractions is somewhat similar to the observed in an ordinary transition series in an attribute, you know, and that is attributed a similar cause that is the imperfect uh, shielding of one electron by another in the same set of orbitals. However, the shielding of one 4F electrons by another is less than that of one uh, D uh, electron by another and the nuclear charge that increases along the series and there is fairly regular decrease in the size of the entire 4F and uh, orbitals and the decrease in the metallic radii that coupled with increase in atomic mass results in you know the general increase in the density of these elements here. So we have the same case thus from titanium which is that equals to 22 to the copper where that, that is equals to 29 the significant increase in the density that may be noted so that the electronic configuration of some of uh, the other properties of the first series of transition element will talk about it and even though we have to draw a sort of a table that it will implement here so on the same cases we'll go ahead we'll just implement a table here electronic configuration and some other properties of the first series of transition elements so that we have to talk about it on the same cases uh, we will be going ahead to pay uh, you know or just uh, go ahead to draw it this is for element um, so here it is here for CITV CR one okay so this has been representing like this only okay so here this is your atomic number we'll talk about first okay Then another we have electronic configuration. So this is what electronic configuration we have for M M plus M2 plus M3 plus. Okay. Then again we have your enthalpy of atomization. which is of uh, we can represent by delta h minus by kj mole inverse then we have your ionization enthalpy by delta fh per kg mole inverse then we have your this is this is for delta 1 h minus and this is for first delta 1 h then we have for second and then again for the third here okay so now for the next we'll talk about for the metallic uh, metallic and ionic we can see that So for the same, we have metallic for ionic here. Then we have this is for M. Then uh, radia at ionic radia PM that we have for ionic radia PM. This is for M two plus M three plus. Then we have standard electrode potential. Potential. So for the same, we have your. It is not representing. I just uh, stop here, then we'll continue with the next bracket here only. So first, we'll do the above one so it will be hidden. Okay. So 
atomic number okay so i just make it into a sort of a table here Expand that as well. So yes, we'll go ahead and as I told. So for the starting with the atomic number, then we'll complete for uh, uh, everything here in JJJ. So I'll just write it on for uh, you know atomic number here. Twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, and thirty. Now for the electronic configuration for the M here that we have here is that is your 3D 1 4S2 this is 3D 2 4S2 this is 3D 3 4S2 this is 3D 5 4S1 this is 3D 5 4S2 this is 3D 6 4S2 then 3d 7 4s2 then 3d 8 4s2 3d 10 4s1 and then we have your 3d 10 4s2 so for the m plus here that is your 3d 1 4s1 3d 2 4s1 3d 3 4s1 3d5 so 3d5 4s1 3d6 4s1 3d7 4s1 3d8 4s1 3d10 3d10 4s1 that we have here so for the same we have to go ahead now I will talk about for M2 plus here and for the same we have here 3D1, 3D2, 3D3, 3D4, 3D5, 3D6, 3D7, 3D8, 3D9 and of course 3D10. Okay. Now for the M3 plus it will be uh, RB then 3d1 3d2 3d3 3d4 3 5 3 6 then then we have your 3d3 3d4 3d5 3d6 3d7 and then after that uh, it will be your look mark here now we'll talk about the enthalpy of atomization here which is your uh, for the same that we have for the scandium here and that is your 326 then it is your 473, 515, 397, 281, 416, 425, 430, then 339, then we have your 128, okay, sorry 126, that we have to go ahead. Now we'll go ahead further, which we'll talk about for the ionization enthalpy here. Um, for the first for the ionization enthalpy for the first here so for the same we talk about it and that is we have 631 656 650 653 717 762 758 736 745 and 906 for the second ionization enthalpy, we'll talk about that is 1235, 1309, 1414, 1592, 1509, 1561, 1644, 1752, 1958, 
that we have and 1734 that we have here okay for the third one we'll talk about it is 2393 2657 2800 sorry 2800 and 30 30 2843 2402 3556 and then we have your 3829 now we'll go ahead for them just for your metallic ionic here for the same we'll have to talk about for the m m2 plus and m3 plus so the, for the metal we have is 147 135 129 137 126 125 1 again 120 sorry 137 uh, cable 126 125 then again we have 125 only and then we have your 128 and we have 137 here for the m2 plus here that we have to talk about it this is ash and that is your 79 82 82 77 74 70 73 and then 75 so the m3 plus we have here is your 73 67 64 62 65 65 61 60 dash okay for the same now we'll talk about the standard electrode potential uh, that we have to discuss here in the detail about it. So standard uh, electrode potential for the same we have to go ahead and the values for the same we have. This is for uh, M2 plus by M and this is for M3 plus by M2 plus. Okay. So the same then we'll just discuss about the density here and yes then we'll end up by density between words. Okay. So here will be ending it up this table so for the same we'll talk about for the m2 plus here this is your hash then we have your minus 1.63 minus 1.18 minus 0 0.90 minus 1.18 minus 0 0.44 minus 0 0.28 minus 0 0.25 my plus 0 0.34 and minus uh, 0 0.76 okay for the m3 plus by m2 plus this is of course dash it will not exist and then minus 2 point 37 minus 0 0.26 then we have your minus 0 0.41 then we have your plus 1.57 pl uh, plus 0 0.77 plus 1.97 then again we have your dash so for the density we talk about it it is your uh, this is your 3 3.43 4.1 6.07 7.19 7.21 7.8 8.7 8.9 8.9 again and 7.1 here okay that we have to talk about it so here we'll be ending it up and uh, this a table being ended up as well so we'll discuss about uh, one of the questions here that we have to discuss here in the detail about it and then after that of course surely we will be you know giving you a sort of one examination uh, exam uh, examples uh, for the question that for you have to do by your on site uh, in uh, you know or the, as a homework you can say that that you have to do it so let's go ahead for the next one and but before starting with that we will just go ahead for the question here so the question is that we have to talk about it why do the transition elements exhibit higher enthalpies of atomization 
so in the same case for the same that is you are uh, because of the large number of impure electron in their atom they have a stronger interatomic interactions and hence stronger bonding between atoms and that uh, resulting uh, here that is uh, the stronger So the same cases for the same uh, reason for this is because of the large numbers of unbuilt electron in the atom they have stronger interatomic interactions and hence stronger bonding between the atoms that resulting in the higher enthalpy of atomization as well for the question that i will give you as a homework here in this that in the series that is sa which is uh, the atomic number we have 21 to zinc which is atomic number we have 30 the enthalpy of atomization of the zinc in the low is lowest and that is your 126 kilojoule uh, mole inverse y that you have to explain it and you have to explain that as well we'll go ahead to discuss about the ionization enthalpy in ionization enthalpy here in terms of ionization enthalpy, due to an increase in the nuclear charge which accompanies the filling on the inner d orbital, there is an increase in ionization enthalpy along each series of the transition element from left to right. Uh, left to right. And how many uh, small variations occurs here? The value for the first three ionization enthalpies of the first row element, these values shows that the successive enthalpies of these elements do not increase as steeply as in the main group element although the first ionization enthalpy in general increases and uh, that the magnitude of the increase in the second and third ionization enthalpy for the successive element in general is much higher the irregular trend in the first ionization enthalpy of the 3d metal though of little uh, chemical significance that can be accounted for by considering that the removal of one electron alter the relative energy of 4s and 3d orbitals so the unique uh, positive ions that have uh, d uh, n configuration with uh, now uh, 4s electrons here where uh, there is thus a reorganization so where the energy that accompanying the ionization with some gains in exchange energy electron into the d orbitals and there is a generally expected increasing trend in the values as the, uh, the effective nuclear charge increases and however the value of cr is lower because of the absence of any change in the d configuration and the value of for uh, zinc at that uh, higher because it represents an ionization from the forest level the lowest common oxidation state of uh, these metals is plus 2 to form the m2 plus ions from the gaseous atom that the sum of the first and the second ionization energy is required in addition to the enthalpy of atomization for each element and the dominant term in the, uh, is the second ionization enthalpy which shows the unusually high values for cr2 and as copper where the d power or uh, that is uh, 5 and d10 
a configuration of M plus ions that are disrupted with considerable loss of exchange energy the value for zinc is cor that correspondingly low as the ionization consisting of the removal of electron which allows the production of stable d10 configuration the trend in the third ionization enthalpy is not complicated by the chorus or vital factor and shows the greater difficulty of removing an electron from the d5 mn2 plus and d10 zn2 plus ions that superimposed upon the general increasing trend in general the third ionization enthalpy are quite high and there is marked break between the values for mn2 plus and fe2 plus and also the high values here with the high values uh, that copper nickel and zinc that indicate why it is difficult to obtain the oxidation state uh, they get greater to uh, greater than uh, two for these elements. Although ionization enthalpies give some uh, guidance concerning the relative uh, stability of oxidation state, and this problem is very complex and not amenable uh, to ready regeneralization as well. Now we'll discuss about the oxidation state as well. For the oxidation state, that is also an important one, and that is uh, we'll have to discuss about it. In terms of ionization state, where well, one of the notable features of the transition element is the great uh, variety of oxidation state it may show in its compound and that the common oxidation state of the first row transition element we will discuss here with the oxidation state of the first row transition metals that is the most common ones uh, are in the bold letter we will talk about it that is uh, for the SC that is we have a plus 3 for TI we have plus 2 plus 3 but most common is your plus 4 that is a stable and then for the v is plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 but the most stable and the more you know uh, uh, that is your more common ones is plus 5 for the cr it is plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 but plus 3 and plus 6 is more common i mean plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 or 7 so plus 2 and plus 7 is more common and where it is very used fe that is plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 6 plus 2 and plus 3 is more common so the co the plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 which is your yeah, plus 2 and plus 3 is more common next is ni plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 so plus 2 is very most common and cu which is plus 1 and plus 2 plus 2 is common zn plus 2 is common here on the same case, the element which gives the greatest numbers of oxidation state that occurs in the near middle of these series, manganese, uh, for uh, that is uh, for uh, example, that exhibit all the uh, oxidation state from plus two to plus seven, and the lesser numbers of oxidation state at the extreme end uh, that uh, stems uh, from either too few uh, electron to lose or shear, which is SC and TI or too many d are vitals then hence fewer vitals available in which uh, to share the electrons with others for higher valence that is cu and zn thus early in the series the scandium is virtually unknown and titanium 4 is more stable than uh, ti uh, titanium third or titanium second at the other end uh, here that the only oxidation state of the zinc is plus 2 no d electrons are involved and that the maximum oxidation state of reasonable stability that corresponds into the value to the sum of s and d electron up to the manganese which is the titanium 402 and v uh, 502 plus as well that cr 4604 minus and mn 704 that followed by the rather abrupt decrease in the stability of the higher oxidation state so that a typical species to follow is our fe second and third is co second and third and i second and copper one and two and zinc second as well that we have to discuss cases where the variability of the oxidation state and the characteristics of the transition element 
that arises out of incomplete filling of the orbital in such a way that their oxidation state differ from each other by unity. Example, a V second, V third, V four, V five, and this is in the contrast with the variability of the oxidation state of non-transition element, where oxidation states normally differ by a unit of two. An interesting feature uh, in a variability of the oxidation state of the D-block element is noticed among the groups, which is groups 4 through uh, a, a 10 as well. Although in the P-block, the lower oxidation states are favored by the heavier members uh, due to the inert pair effect. The opposite is true in the group uh, of a D-block, for example, in group 6, MO6 and W, which is a 4 or 6 here, that are found to be more stable than CR6, and thus the CR6 in the form of dichromate in acidic medium is a strong oxidizing agent, whereas MO3 and a WO3 are not. Low oxidation states are found when a complex compound has legend capability that capable of pi acceptance character in addition to the uh, sigma bonding for example in nico4 and facio5 the oxidation state of nickel and iron is zero now we'll go ahead further which is another question we talk about it which is here that name a transition element which does not exhibit the variable oxidation state where the scandium uh, z atomic number equals to 21 that does not exhibit the variable uh, oxidation state as well we'll talk about the another question which is which of the 3d series of the transition metal that exhibits the largest uh, number of oxidation states and why that is your m in here now we'll talk about the trends in m2 uh, plus and m uh, standard electrode uh, you know uh, that uh, potential as well that we have to discuss on um, which is about the observed value and the calculated value we'll talk about so uh, the trends uh, in the m2 plus uh, by a m a standard electrode potential were that uh, the thermochemical uh, parameters we have so just write it down a question that we had even discussed about it name a transition element which does not exhibit variable oxidation state that we have so we have another question that is trends in m2 uh, plus uh, by m that standard electrode potential here where the thermochemical parameters related to the transformations of solid metal atoms to the m2 plus ions and solutions and their standard electrode potential the observed value of e uh, that is these those calculated with the data here and the unique behavior of copper that having a positive E uh, that uh, we have and that account for its inability to liberate H2 from acids only oxidizing H in acids that nitric and uh, you know hot or concentrated sulfuric which react with copper the acid being reduced in the high energy to transform the copper and a Cu2 plus aqueous is not balanced by its hydration enthalpy the general trends towards the less negative values that across the series is related to the general increase in the sum of the first and the second ionization enthalpy. It is interesting to note that the value of E minus R for Mn and that uh, Ni and zinc uh, that are more negative than expected uh, from the trends as well. So here we will be here we will be uh, ending it up and that will discuss many more uh, topics that we have to discuss here in the next in the next coming classes so here we'll be ending it up and it's a huge request from my side to all the viewers so please go through the subscribe button and please like share and subscribe to our channel so that many and maximum people can get the information at once and you can also enjoy the video as well other than chemistry if i'm going ahead so yes other than chemistry we had completed your sociology and software engineering as well 
and uh, that is we are dealing with the quantitative aptitude we are in the arithmetical ability we have had completed operations on numbers lcm and scf of numbers decimal fraction simplification square roots and cube root averages and the problems are numbers that we have uh, started with and hopefully we'll end it up with uh, this as well after that we'll complete start discussing about your the another one which is your the problems on ages in terms of reasoning where we have completed your verbal reasoning which is your verbal and verbal reasoning we have completed your general mental ability in the logic reasoning in non-verbal reasoning we have completed your series analogy classification analytical reasoning mirror image for image embedded figure in the completions of uh, complete patterns and then after that uh, figure matrix we have to deal with it after that if i'm talking about another one that is in terms of uh, the chemistry here um, that is of the d and f block that we have started with and that even though we have to discuss more over related to that as well so in terms of chemistry we had completed your unit one which is the solid state here in the uh, unit one that is the solid state we had cover up in terms of solid state we had cover up the general characteristics of solid states amorphous and crystalline solid classification of crystalline solid crystal lattice and unit cell number of atoms in a unit cell close back structure packing efficiency calculation involving unit cell dimensions imperfection in solid electrical properties and magnetic properties as well unit 2 is your solution which we have to cover up as your types of solution expressing the concentration of solution solubility preparations of liquid a solution ideal and non-ideal solution collocative property and determinations of molar masses abnormal molar masses as well unit third is your electrochemistry which we had completed your electrochemical cells galvanic cells nonce equation conductance of electrolytic cells electrolytic cells and electrolysis and batteries as well after that if i'm talking about we had completed your fuel cells and collision as well in unit 4 which is your chemical kinetic where we had completed that your rate of re chemical reaction factor influencing the rate of reaction integrated rate equation zero cost order reaction temperature dependence of the rate, equa rate of equation collision theory of chemical reaction as well unit 5th is a surface chemistry where we have to complete it adsorption catalyst colloids classifications of colloids emergence colloids around us Unit 6 is general principle and process of isolations of element which is we have to cover up the occurrence of metals, concentrations of ores and extractions of crude metals from concentrated ore, thermodynamic principles of metallurgy, electrochemical principles of metallurgy, oxidation, reduction, refining and then we have done your uses of aluminium, copper, zinc and iron as well. Then after that, uh, we had completed your uh, group 7, uh, unit 7, that is your, the P-block element that we have to discuss here. We are in the same, that group 15 element, dinitrogen, ammonia, oxides of nitrogen, nitric acid, phosphorus, allotropic forms, phosphine, phosphorus, halides, oxohacids of phosphorus, group 16 element, dioxygen, where we have to complete the simple oxides, ozone, sulfur, allotropic forms, sulfur dioxide, oxoacids of sulfurs, and sulfuric acid. Group 17 element chlorine, hydrogen uh, chloride, also acids of halogens, interhalogens compound, and group 18 element as well. In unit A, the DNF block element where we had completed positions in the periodic table, electronic configurations of the D block element, general properties of the transition element D block, some important compounds of the transition element, the lanthanides and the alkanoids, some application of the DNF block element as well. The unit uh, that after that completing, we'll start discussing about unit 9, which is the coordination compound. We will discuss about the Werner's theory of the coordination compound, definitions on, of some important terms pertaining to the coordination compound, nomenclatures of coordination compound, isomerism of the coordination compound, bonding in coordination compound, bonding in metal carbon analysis, stability of the coordination compound, and importance and applications of coordination compound as well. So here we'll be ending it up and it's a huge request from my side to all the viewers to please go through with the subscribe button and please like, share and subscribe our channel so that many and maximum people can get the information at once and even though you can also enjoy the video as well. So thank you. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and give a suggestion on a comment box. Thank you.